Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Uh, last time we got some cleanup done in our app and now we are ready to start doing something a little more sophisticated, I think. Um, we've got this all, the fact, this window is now completely tested and before it wasn't, before it was just stub code. Uh, and where that is, is right here inside of application frame. There's our tested code, there's our tests. Our tests are a bit ugly but um, I don't know how else to do it, so I'm going to let that go. Our application, main application test uh, class, is no longer tested, or it never was tested. It's still not tested, but there's a lot less code in here now, so I feel pretty good about that. Um, this is irrelevant. Actually, let's just close everything down except for the scratch pad. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to get to the point where we can have other stuff inside of this window. And rather than try to do that with test to start out with, I think I'm going to do some spikes. And I thought it might be interesting to do those spikes on camera rather than off camera. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and do that. So we have some existing spikes already here. And I think what I'll do is I'll just continue to edit this existing swing spike. Uh, let me see what it says. That's how we run it. And let's see if that works. Okay, so there's our swing spike. It actually has, you know what, it has everything we need. It has uh, buttons and so forth that are already connected up. So I'm going to go ahead and toss in some fields, but I don't think this is going to be that hard. Mostly this is a design question, and since I haven't worked with Swing for so long, there's probably some design patterns out there that I'm not aware of. I'm sure some of you out there will let me know in the comments, and uh, that will be helpful. But um, let's just... It doesn't look like we need to rewrite the spike or update the spike. It just needs looks like we need to look at how it worked. So... Um, we want to, let's see how that button works. Yeah, there's an event on the button that we need to capture, and then we set a value. So, I think, uh, looking at this, I think actually rather than doing a spike, we'll just dive straight into uh, the actual code. So, let me put this away, and put that away, and yeah, let's... As usual, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but um, let's just try it. So um, let's add another component. And let's make it, uh, what is that, a J form field. Um, formatted text field. J text field. Text field. Okay, we'll start with the J text field. Just working this out as we go along as usual. And that should fail. We're expecting two components now. That should fail because we don't have two components. Yeah. So in our application frame, we're going to want, um, let's factor this. I know I shouldn't, I shouldn't actually do refactoring while I've got the red bar, but I don't care. <laughs> oh, now that's bizarre. Um, Everything still working? Uh, it looks like just some sort of little glitch in uh, Eclipse. Oh, we already got a layout method. Um, Let's 
do it that way. Okay, expected to, so So now we'll have the correct number of components, but the second one will not be a text field. Expected text field was panel. There. There we go. Okay. Now, let's see what happens when we actually run this puppy. Oh, that is just terrible. <laughs> what did I do? Oh my goodness. It must have something to do with the default layout. Um, so let's see. What What is the default layout of a J-frame? So for those of you who are not familiar with Swing, um, the way it works is there's this layout manager, which is actually pretty cool. A lot of people hate them, but I, I really like them because you can do liquid layouts, that is, layouts that change in response to the size of the window very easily. Well, you can do them. I wouldn't say it's easy, but you can do them. Whereas other systems that don't have the layout managers that Swing does also can't handle multiple size windows very easily. They really sort of rely on you to have hard-coded window values. Uh, that's also the kind of behavior you tend to get out of GUI builders, which you'll notice I don't use. Um, partly because I like to do... Uh, GUI builders tend to make it really easy to have lots of duplication in your code. So that if you want to make a change to one thing, you actually end up having to go back in the builder making changes in lots of places. We haven't seen the benefits of doing it programmatically yet, um, but we will fairly soon, I think. Anyway, so we've got these layout managers, and each one of them handles where stuff goes differently. And um, I'm guessing that the J-Frame has a layout manager that when we put a second component in there hides the first one for whatever reason. Um, but I don't remember off the top of my head which layout manager it was. Maybe a card layout. Um, one easy way to find out would be to uh, check the layout. Uh, let's say, I don't know what kind of layout we want yet. Um, so, that may not be what I think it is. Okay, so it's a border layout. That's the overall frame. Let's ask it about content pane layout. Okay, that was unexpected. J root pane. And out of content pane? Well, let's say that we want it to be, let's, oh, I don't know, um, border layout? I don't even remember what the layout managers are, I have to be honest. So let's go back to the package. Border layout, that looks promising. The way the border layout works is 
well, like it says, you've got five regions, the center automatically resizes, and the others um, are around that center layout. So let's, let's say that we want our border layout. Our layout to be a border layout. I don't know, I'm just sort of guessing here. Um, oops, and let's check that that's true, which it won't be. Was root pane. Um, and again, it's been a very long time since I've done swing work other than in this application. So maybe there's better layout managers nowadays. That still isn't working. What am I doing wrong? Hmm. Oh, well, if you're going to do a layout like that, you've got to tell it where stuff goes. There we go. So you can see now that we're going to have, you know what, I think this has a, I think this had a border layout all along. Maybe not. Yeah, I think it had a border layout all along. I think that was the default. But um, regardless, we'll make it more explicit. The test thought it was a root pane, whatever that is. And or either that or I wrote the test wrong. Anyway, there's our field. So that's a start. But so I think what I need to do is, is typically at this point, what I'll do is I'll actually sketch out what I want the UI to look like look like on a piece of paper. Um, so I can't do that for all of you out there. With that in the way that you can see. But um, that's, I think, what I need to do next. So I'm going to go ahead and call this good. I know, again, we're, up, we're a little early, but um, I think I need to sketch and do a little playing. And then when I come back next episode, we'll look at getting the rest of this UI put together. So thanks very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Actually, no, I take it back. Um, while I was uh, rather... I thought I was done with the video, but I'm not. I've actually put together this little sketch right here. Um, and I think this represents what I want. Not so much that top part, but uh, this part right here. So that, actually not even that much, that part right there. Um, I think that's what I want this to end up looking like. So that's the goal, um, and that's what we'll pick up with next time in episode 61. So, okay, that's really it. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and uh, I'll catch you next time.